The root of long-term success with health and fitness lies in behavior change. Look, if you've listened to the podcast for any longer than 10 minutes, you know that we communicate this all the time. But what's the best way to change behavior? Well, I'll tell you one way that is not a good way. Look at your behavior, declare it as irrational or bad or dumb, and then try to attack it. That actually doesn't work as well as the following. Look at your behavior and try to make it make sense. What is coherent about the behavior? Why am I engaging in this behavior? Once you understand it and it makes sense, now you can have compassion for yourself and moving forward is a lot easier. So understand yourself first, then move forward. You know, that's to me mm. uh, so obvious when communicating with another person or help like, so like, like thinking that way, like that's part of what makes a great partnership or relationship in, in good communication with your, your partner is like, you know, they say they do something that seems irrational. And instead of getting angry at them for being irrational, trying to understand them is like one of the greatest steps towards having a better relationship and communication. Right. Yet. I think people probably struggle to do this with themselves though. Right? It is a relationship with yourself too. What yeah. Do you think about that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Like, so I think, like, again, uh, if you have a healthy partnership and relationship, this is very obvious to me. Like, you, you have to learn this skill. Like, if you have a, if you've made it ten years in a marriage or longer or whatever, uh, you had to figure this out. You had because within that those that decade, you're going to encounter you know, irrational behavior on both parties. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to act irrational at one point. Katrina's going to act irrational. What makes it work is that we have this compassion and empathy for each other and understanding of childhood trauma and being raised different that it, like the reaction is not, oh my God, you're being crazy. It's, oh man, I wonder what happened to my wife that that's how she feels with that. Or I wonder what, and so, but then being able to do that back on yourself, totally. say like with, you know, eating disorders or uh, body dysmorphia or certain things that we do to hurt ourselves or to cope uh, with feelings that we don't want to feel. Yeah, I bet it's much more challenging. It, it is. We don't. We, we talk to ourselves in ways we wouldn't dare speak uh, to other people. But really, the, the a good example of this would be like, um, gosh, I I just I can't believe how much I overeat. I overeat all the time. I can't stop it. What's wrong with me? It's so irrational. I, I need to lose 50 pounds. The doctor said my blood lipids are looking bad. Like, I just need to stop this. This is not good, right? That that versus, okay, like, let's, let's think about this. How is this behavior? How does this make sense? Why do I have this ingrained behavior where I overeat? And then you look deeper and you say, wow, it's, it's typically when I'm anxious and I'm anxious a lot. So what does this say about me? How does this make sense? And you go, okay, the, the pain of the anxiety, the fear of the anxiety, the feeling of the anxiety is unbearable, but I can make it bearable when I eat food. When I eat food, it numbs the pain of the anxiety. Wow, that does make sense. In that context, it makes sense to overeat because it does get rid of some of the pain of the anxiety. But now you can approach it from uh, a compassionate standpoint. Okay, I can see how that behavior makes sense, but now we need to change because the context has changed. Life has changed. I might've developed that, that coping mechanism as a child, but now my life is very different. So now I can tackle this from a different perspective because without that compassion, what ends up happening is you just battle. You're, you're, you're trying to create a new way of being with an old way of being that's so deeply ingrained and it becomes a fight. And the, the, the problem is the, the harder that fight becomes, the more the ingrained behavior comes out because it probably became a behavior during uh, stressful times or something like that. So, right. so, and the more you put, it's like a movement pattern. The harder you push a bad movement pattern, the worse it's going to get because that's what your body defaults to. Yeah. So it, have it make sense for yourself first and in a real way, like, okay, I, I overeat when I'm anxious because it helps me deal with the pain. And actually the pain of anxiety is so high that I can't bear it, but when I eat, I can actually bear it. So that's why it makes sense. Yeah. It just seems like, the root of all of these behaviors, undesirable behaviors is usually like pain or fear. Totally. And that's really like, and that's a hard thing to dive into that. Um, and that's why too, I, I think, you know, along us talking and discussing, especially with fat loss and people that have had issues with that, you know, a lot of times we've always been more like, you know, go seek, counsels, therapy, somebody to talk to, uh, to get a little further past like that initial, 
response of like, well, this is a coping mechanism or this is something that makes me feel good in the moment. And so I got to just cut this off and, you know, like there's more there to really explore to, um, yeah, be able to understand it better. To do, your you, point. do you know, this makes me think of, um, one of the things that we've been asked a lot and, and I think we've tried to explain it pretty well. I think this is a, like an even better explanation for it. Um, like why we're not like big, the biggest fans of like the 75 hard approach. Yeah. And I think this is, this is why, and it's not because I don't think proving that you can do something hard for 75 days and be disciplined and create all these habits. And I, I, I totally get that. And I get where people can rationalize why that is so good. But what I think we all have come to realize in our uh, you know, experience of coaching so many people is most people that suffer uh, from obesity or even just you know chronically losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight. They uh, struggle with this. They they struggle with this, and many times there's something much deeper than just this surface. You don't have the discipline to do this every single day, and even if I can get that person because they, they have the mental fortitude to muscle through it for X amount of days, I didn't solve the problem. And I know because I've been doing this so long yeah. that even if they prove that to themselves for X amount of days, that that's going to resurface until yeah. they decide to, to work inward and figure out what is it that has caused me to yeah, utilize it'll be in a different form or, you know, it'll just reemerge. That's right. It'll, it'll manifest in some other addiction or other than behavior, but most likely it'll come right back in the same one. Yeah. Right? You'll just, you'll, you'll most likely you'll just, you know, in a year or two years later, you'll, you'll go right back to using that as a coping mechanism or not, you know, not but caring. If it. it was all about being rational, logical and making sense, we wouldn't have a problem. We would have no health, chronic health issues. They just wouldn't exist because everybody would just do, what well, makes sense, but it's far more complex than that. And also, if you look at health and really consider its entirety, right? Is it healthy to uh, hate on yourself, uh, to criticize yourself, to constantly get into shame spirals? No, I don't think anybody would argue that that's healthy, right? In other words, to put it differently, you can't hate yourself into better health. It doesn't work that way. You can hate yourself to changing some behaviors for a short period of time, but it doesn't work long term. It just doesn't because you can't hate yourself into better health. The only way to get yourself into better health in a in a sustainable way, in a long term, in a, in a true way, is through self care, and that starts with understanding why the behaviors you have exist in the first place. Not by looking at them and saying that's dumb, irrational, stupid. Why don't you just stop doing that, uh, or even ignoring altogether that it might make sense for some particular reason, and just trying to change it. If you understand yourself. Look, think about it this way, and 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 there's there's a there's a type of therapy that utilizes this technique where you're supposed to envision a, a part of you. So maybe there's a part of you that you know gets when you get any kind of criticism, you 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 fire back, you get real defensive, and so you might picture like who is that part of me? What does that look like? And then you you picture this person or a creature or maybe yourself at a particular age. What ends up happening is it becomes easier for your mind to understand what's going on because these parts of you are very complex and our brains are very good at understanding people, but not abstract things. So people have personalities, they have triggers, they have belief systems, and so do these parts of you. So when you view this person, so think of a relationship, right? You have a relationship with yourself, separate yourself for a second. How? What would be a more successful relationship? Hammering that person? Telling that person they're an idiot, that makes no sense, that's dumb, you're fat, you're obviously sick, you're gonna get a heart attack, why don't you just whatever? Versus like, hey, look, I, I understand why you do this. this I, it actually makes sense based on why you developed this in the first place. I understand that. We're in a different place though now. So let's see if we can change how we view things and how we care for ourselves. It's a very different approach mm -hmm. and it's much more likely to result in a, a cohesive, integrated individual who's able to move forward without hating themselves into oblivion. Because I know what that looks like even when people think it's successful, and I know this from our space, right? you got all these fitness influencers <laughs> who on the outside look like they're successful. Look at them, they're so fit and lean. And they've but they've hated themselves into that. No, you see what they actually do themselves, how they treat themselves. They're not healthy, they're not healthy. It's not a, it's not a, well, even if they are able to stick with it, it's not a good way to go. I mean, it just reminds me of like unresolved issues and like to your point of the 75 hard and all that, it's like these unresolved issues. We're just going to motor right past it. Yeah. Or bury right? them. Just bury <laughs> it back down. But then how's that make you feel inside? Yeah. It erodes you from the inside. Yeah. Right. You know, and it's, so it's like, 
we're just going to like move. Yes, you can, you can move past it, but it's not like it's, it, you've resolved it. It's still there. It also robs you of the joy of feeling like this is something that you wanted to do. Look, look, if somebody came in right now and held a gun to your head and said, Justin, you are going to run 50 miles. At the end of that 50 miles, you would not be like, wow, I accomplished it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It would yeah. be a very different feeling than if you said, I'm going to go see if I can run 50 miles. I'm going to see if I can do it. And then you accomplish it. It's a very different feeling. You rob yourself of that feeling, which is very important, very important for long-term success. You rob yourself of that feeling that, wow, this is something I really wanted to do. Instead of, I hated myself to get here. Mm -hmm. This sucked. Like, that's like, totally I'm different. I'm glad that's over. Yeah, you know? totally different. And this is why people stop exercising and get off their quote-unquote diet because they just want to enjoy their life. That's the qu quote. This is what a lot of people say. So you you brought this up today. Obviously, um, you've been reading or listening to this. How is this applying to you? Today's giveaway is MAPS Anabolic Advanced. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this month's sale, two very popular muscle building programs, MAPS Strong, MAPS Powerlift, half off both of them right now if you're interested just click on the link at the top of the description below all right back to the show oh it's uh so i i think this is going to be very valuable things that i find valuable for myself i can often communicate uh well on the podcast and i found this woman i'm not going to say her name yet because i still have to watch more of her content and see if i want to have her come on the show but i really like her and she communicates. Make sure she's not a cultist or anything like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. cool you never know. Maybe run those by me. I can watch one. I can watch one video and be like, oh. <laughs> but I've already seen a couple, uh, and she, and um, I like this um, this field because it applies so much to how we communicate on the show and what we do. Like I, we could communicate. I love this field. We could yeah. communicate X's and O's all day long. Like best way to work out, foods, what they do for your body, etc., sure. etc. But the real value is in communicating like the, the, the mindset, the psychology, the, how we approach things, why two people could follow the exact same program and diet, but one of them finds long-term success and, and finds joy in it. The other one hates it and ends up stopping. Like what's the difference between the two? And so, you know, finding these people listen, and they, they, you won't find these in health and fitness spaces. These are all like, you know, cognitive therapy, you know, uh, parts therapy. That's another term for it. Um, that's where you'll find some of this information. I have my own, like, you know, everybody has these, right? We all have our different parts, but there's things, there's things that I do that I, I afterwards step outside and go, God, why do I react that way? And it's a different part of me that for whatever reason surfaces, um, and that reacts a particular way. And then you look back and I mean, how many times have you done something? You look back and you go, why would I, that didn't make any sense. Why would I react that way? Why would I say that? Or why would I, you know, why would that trigger me in that particular way? Well, that's a part of you that, at some point made sense at some point you developed it. Yeah. I, I mean, I was kind of hoping you would share what that is. Yeah. I, mean, I definitely, I love this stuff and I definitely 100% yeah. practice this. I mean, I've talked a long time ago. I talked about how, you know, this started for me at night I'd lay in bed and I would reflect on the day of the, the highs, the lows, if I emotionally reacted to something and then I would do these deep dives on like the why, and that's part of this kind of yeah. empathy path that you're talking oh, about. Oh, you want me to get, I'll get some specific. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like yeah. to hear, I'd like to hear where it's, cause I'm sure it's, it's, it'll be useful for so oh, maybe yeah, no, me no. or somebody no, I, else. I feel you. No, no, I'll be, I'll get specific. So for me, I always, I feel most comfortable and secure when I'm valuable to other people. And this is, I've, I've identified this now for a while. So if I'm helping someone or um, teaching someone or giving people things, I feel more comfortable and secure than when I'm asking for things or needing things, or you guys know me, I don't talk about, you know, problems or whatever. You have to pull it out of me or I will when it's like, you know, things are going to explode. And that probably for me developed, well, I know why it developed. It developed as a, it made sense for how I grew up. I grew up as the oldest of four, and I was immediately parentified. Immediately, I was given the power and responsibility of a parent. So literally, as a kid, eight, nine years old, I could ground my siblings. I could give them things, take them away. They would ask for things from me. So I had all this, this, this ability, and I found, and I saw that that was valuable. At the same time, I had no place to ask for things to my, for my parents, or how do you help me, or whatever. It was right. like, I right away saw this is my value, and any other issue that I, and any issue I have is a burden because already I have to help 
take care of all these different types of things. Yeah. And it became, it's a part of me that I, that I have to work with for sure. It's very hard for me to ask for help. You guys know that. Yeah, no, very much mm -hmm. so. So two, so two things on that one, uh, you know that you're there cause you're, you've, you, you understand it, you've unpacked it. Are there things that you actively are doing to, to challenge that? For example, knowing that like, Hey, this is an area where I wouldn't ask for help, but I'm going to do it because I need to work on this muscle. I need to develop. Oh, this. So uncomfortable, but yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, exactly it, that. Yeah. And then also the second part, um, typically what we do in situations like this too, is we tend to attract people and things in our life that feed that bad side of you. And so have you recognized that in relationships and things that you have sought out, like, oh, wow, I, I tend to attract that type of person or relationship because their insecurity fuels it's, this issue. It's actually me. deeper than that. It's more like I'll create that. So oh, if wow. I have a friend, let's say that I have a friend and there was no, that, that wasn't the case. They're a normal person, whatever, we're friends. And then we develop a relationship where I'm always offering for help, buying for things or taking right, care right. of them. And then they don't know. They just think like, oh, this is how Sal is. And this is how the relationship develops. And without realizing that it's it's perpetuating. So that's what tends to happen is I tend to build that. And then let's say they offer me. Like, you know how many times I've done something and someone says, oh, let me help you out. I can, I can, no, 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 I'm fine. Or let me get lunch. No, no, I'm good. And so I'll end up perpetuating it because it, it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. So it's even deeper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good stuff. I think this is very important uh, things, maybe not my specific issue, but just how we, you guys, I mean, I don't have to make the case for this. You guys know this, like how uh, our minds work, how our minds change and how behaviors change. If you can't tackle that, you could follow all the instructions you want. This is going to suck and it's not going to work mm. as evidenced by just how the fail rate is so high. Do you know how many people fail at accomplishing these, these long-term, you know, fitness and health behaviors who are otherwise successful in other parts of their life that require lots of discipline. Yeah. It's not a discipline issue. These no, are like it's not. It's successful very, people that do great in other areas. It's, like very, much, it's very much so a self-awareness, self-care situation. Yeah. And if you don't have the self-awareness or the the willingness to try and learn that skill set, that emotional intelligence, to then do the work in the self-care this is going to be a, a hamster wheel for you because mm -hmm. right? you you have to solve. Otherwise, you just keep hopping from diet to workout program to thing to next to next, thinking that that's the answer when there's something else that's causing all these behaviors are going back to it. And until you decide to work on that part, like, yeah. That, and it's so funny because- you know, obviously the stuff that we get into battles on Instagram and bullshit about oh. is like the, is the fucking science debates and the X's and O's. It's like, you know, it's so crazy. Like 0.8 grams of protein. protein. No, yes. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, mean I'm yeah. Just, I just opened my DM and someone's just like, Stupid. you know, I really like you guys and I really like James Smith and here's an area where you guys, yeah. see, he seems I to be. Got the same DM. Oh, yeah. did you? Yeah. It's like, it's so like you guys have no idea how like not you, you're, you're not focusing <laughs> yeah. on the right things. Like, that's so surface. Like yeah, it is so surface. It's so stupid. It's like take his advice or take it our advice. Doesn't matter because there's other things that matter way more in that situation. And it's this type of stuff. It's yeah. that getting to a place where you're willing to to put the work in to figure those things out to then get to the root causes to then understand yourself better and to know. And then also to have empathy for yourself on why you act that way and then be, and then knowing how to exercise that muscle too and challenge yourself, right? Like, which is the, now the hard part. It's like you did the first hard part, yeah. which is identify, yeah. which is a lot of work in itself. I'm sure you, you know. And then now the next thing is like, fuck, now I got to put this shit in it. Cause it, it well, just, that's like, the thing. It's all about like, go apply it. Yes. Cause I, I'm okay. And this is my little bit of a knock with, with, uh, you know, there, there's two sides to this because I do see like, you know, there's this push from all the the people out there in the gym that are like, well, we'll just fucking work on it, work your way through it. Yeah. And then there's the other side of the coin where you get the wellness people that are just like, let's talk about this forever. And yeah, let's yeah, get yeah, into yeah, this yeah, fucking yeah. psychoanalytical bullshit. Yeah. Let's do just, shrooms together yeah, and like and we're become just more, get aware, stuck more aware of this like constant <laughs> chatter in our minds. We're not applying any of these like yep, for sure. concepts. For and sure. so uh yeah, it's for me, it's like 
Oh wow, that's a that that resonates. That's a, that's a very good point, and I need to reflect on that. But now, now I got to do go work. Take action. Yes, now I got to do work. And I, 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 I what a great point, Justin. And I and I love you. Yeah, because you get the ruminators. It, it, we really. Yes, I mean, I, I, I don't want I like to turn to a psycho babble uh, podcast either. I, you know? I, 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 I I like to think that that was one of the things that that drew all of us together to communicate in this space is because we 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 recognize the benefits of that that woo woo shit you're talking about. We recognize the benefits of the, like, you just need to fucking put the work in, like, yeah. go in and do the, like do the work. But it really, it's somewhere in the middle of that. You know what I'm saying? And there's something to take from both of those yeah. mentalities. Just and, like all the different methodologies out there for training. You and know? Uh, unfortunately, the way society works though, is we tend to gravitate to the most extreme versions of each. We tend to like yeah. want the the hardest hardcore mentality person, seventy five hard, go kill it, fucking ignore this, go kill this mentality, brilliant person here, and or we want to go the other person is just like it's all inside, and we just have to yeah. think it through, and it'll work, and it's yeah. like let's yeah feel our feelings, and then let's talk more about it. Like it's so funny that the yeah. we we really live more in this kind of gray area, and there's something to be said about both these camps. That's why both resonate. Because they're both true yeah, to an extent. Totally. But they're not true is true. But they're yeah. not all true by themselves. Yeah. That's yeah. why. That's the big that's the nuance. I think that's the that's the challenge. Totally. Anyway, I gotta tell a story, Adam, that yeah. you 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 I don't know if you'll appreciate this. I know <laughs> you don't know if I'll I know I know we appreciated it. So Justin, myself, and Doug went on a walk yesterday. <laughs> yes, okay. I'm so we glad went, you bring So I've been trying to get it go on a walk. We try to do this in the middle of the day sometimes because we get locked in this box and it's just ugh. Yeah, yeah. You just feel it physically, right? So yesterday I don't remember what you were doing. I think you might have taken off and he had a business call. Remember? That's yeah, right. That's right. So, the three of us went for a walk. Yeah. It was sunny outside, and we're going around. It's a nice neighborhood to go walk, and we're walking, and a car drives by and slows down, and it's this woman. She's got her kid in the car, and she looks out the the, the window and she goes, "I just want to let you guys know, you are some handsome." Whoa! Handsome you are some of the most handsome gentlemen I've seen. Yes. yes. And then she drives off, and yeah. you weren't even there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I was like, I wonder if this would happen more I, if it was just us walking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bringing the average like, down hey, this whole so, time. No. <laughs> when, I, hey, no. I expect it to happen when no, you're there. Uh, when you're there, I expect it. You weren't even there, so I was like, wait a minute. No, because it's opposite. Because that one time we were in Campbell, and then Adam literally had like every lady like. <laughs> Uh, come out of the restaurant like oh my god yeah, was when he, we was competing oh my yeah. god. so this was great so this, like hey i guess to, this I, is a win I, for I, us did you pay someone did no I, did not, I didn't i didn't but i tell you since you bring that up and we're talking about psychology and behaviors like that it's so it's intoxicating to 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 reach that out so you i so understand the addiction to that what getting right? attention yeah oh sure like like that for from from, oh, right. from getting your body to look a certain way to where like people just you're you now become the one percent of the one yeah. percent and everybody looks whether it's i mean it's, maybe some people think they're grossed but, out by it but most people are but like this was a great compliment because she wasn't hitting on us obviously she had her kid in the car she, she had like kinda, a three-year-old in the car no I think she would, maybe, I don't know. It didn't seem that way. It seemed like a genuine, you know, like a really nice compliment. She yeah. drives off. We all look at each other like, what? And then Justin's yeah. like, Adam's not even here. And then my mind's like, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> maybe this whole time he's just bringing our average like, down. Wow. That's, oh, that's, wow. This is, <laughs> this is crazy. You know, I, I also think this though. She might've actually mean, got out of the car if Adam was there. No, ah! Stop, 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 stop. You got, I, no, you, I think everybody's <laughs> very handsome here. Um, Appreciate it. I, I think too, we're also, it's a, he, yeah. not to, not to be the turd in the punch bowl here, but I think that, <laughs> oh, God, you yeah. well, I think she was crazy. No, no. I think like, Hey, it's, the gray hairs, the balding, it's pretty obvious we're not young anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So there's not this like, look at those young, good looking guys. It's kind of like great for your age. Yes. It's kind of like, I kind of, oh, come on. I, is that, that what happened? Is that what happened? I kind of feel they're like, oh, like, you just the, ruined it. Like, like okay. the sympathy look, at those, look at those three guys that just came out of the retirement home. They look great for is their that, age. You mean like if we saw like a, like a really fit, healthy, you know, 75 year old, you know what? You're a beautiful woman. Yes. Is that what we're getting? Yeah, that's oh, like on. you know how that is when you guys see like somebody who <laughs> like we Adam. know we know they're older and we're like you made us feel like crap. <laughs> I didn't mean to be. You guys, wow, I'm you throwing guys myself great. in this category. Look how you're walking without a walker. You guys uh, are doing phenomenal. Yeah. There, yeah. we are now at a place where there is there's no the like, age there, is there. It wasn't that long. Maybe just when we first started this podcast ten years ago, there would be times, especially early on when I was like super jacked and young and still had hair. 
I mean, people will be like, are you like 25, 24? Yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah. Like that ain't happening. No, no. There's, <laughs> there's no, there's nobody going. Nobody's carding. Yeah, there's, no, there's nobody carding. There's nobody going like, are you in your 20s? Dude, I got Or 30s? There's like, yeah, you're 40 something for hey, sure. I got carded <laughs> at, a, at, a, at a restaurant and the person who asked me for the card actually <clears throat> chuckled. Like, uh, I got to see, I, I got to see your ID. I was like, <laughs> yeah, oh, it's like a yeah, mandatory like, thing. Like, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not going to let me have this one? Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm uh, it's funny. But I mean, Justin brought up the other day, like, uh, just being around some old friends and everything like that. And he made the comment. It's like, man, it's crazy. Like how, uh, like how out of shape our friends are getting. Oh, yeah. You know? oh, yeah. Hang around pe your peers. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you'll feel really and we're healthy. and I really feel like you know this forty five to fifty five range where we're at, we're all at right now is, boy, it, that's really the the turning point. I really feel like oh. it's we you notice it happening. I saw it happening yeah, in the mid thirties. You, you see it happening in the you start to see it happening thirties, but not like dramatic. No. But four and even forties, yeah. but then that forty the first hard. This forty five to this forty five to fifty is like oh yeah. This is when you're like oh John, you know he's on five medications. Yeah, and oh, yeah, and you see the actual health ramifications, and it's not just like a, a surface thing. You know, it's not just like oh man, you put on some pounds or you know. There's like real like disease yes. and like <clears throat> great like. There's just things that people are battling, like at my age now, that I just wouldn't have even anticipated, and it was like it was really hard to see, dude. So, yeah, it was it was it was a big reality check, and like trying to like you know have that f extra emphasis on like I got to keep myself going on this healthy path, man. It's like this is not like the, the, it's it's it, it accelerates. It's you know? tough, man. I mean, I'm, I, I've said this so many times on the show, but uh, you have to break all the quote unquote <laughs> rules. To be fit and healthy. I don't mean actual rules, but like, you know, if you do what you're supposed to, um, then you're not going to be healthy. If you live the way everybody else lives, you have to literally you can't be normal. Be you can't be normal. You got to be different. You got to be okay with thing. it. You got to be comfortable with it. You know what though? I do want it, it, to, it's tough, but it's not tough. I, I want the, the young audience that we have, the people that are under 30 years old that listen to us. The, the really cool thing that I've really enjoyed about getting older is that, I, I actually think it's easier uh -huh. because of all the years you put of the work in, yeah, yes, it's, it's of putting on yeah, and, and I'm, I'm experiencing that right now. Like even with this like kind of dramatic cut that I'm doing, like I would just, I really would lose a lot of muscle on that, on that. But you know what? It's like, I, you know, this was, I've never cut down like this since a, a, I ran a four year period of putting on muscle. I mean, I was on a mission to build it. I was well over 205 pounds of lean body mass on my body. And then I've held on to that for all the way into my forties. And so now to come back down, it's just like, oh, wow. The fact that I'm like eating as low as I am, training volume is as low as I am. And I'm still, I kind of understand, although I don't even want to put myself in that same category as a Ben Pakulski. But I kind of get now where I know. Remember that? Remember like, we we're like, come on! I'm trying to lose 100 pounds of muscle. It's hard. Not working. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, it, I get it. I, I I have a small understanding of that. Of like, boy, you put that many years yeah. and decades yep. of being just consistent with this, and hey, you know what's kind of cool is as you get older. Yep. Uh, the the amount of intensity volume that you have to have to maintain that is significantly easier. and of course what comes with that too is wisdom and understanding your body and like yeah, right. knowing you know what to adjust like knowing what screws, yes you know and it, yeah so you don't have to put quite as much of like all at once effort and this is also again back to some of the things that we continually say on the show all the time why I'm where we're all huge advocates of this like you know, baby steps and adding one behavior, then another behavior and st behavior stacking and habit stacking, because then you, you really start to grasp and understand like really what moves the needle for you specifically, like, cause everybody has their own yeah. bad behaviors, bad habits, things that they don't do well, things they do better than other things. And that's where we're also unique. Everybody's baby step also looks different. Yeah. Right. Like, like somebody might be the, the thing that unlocks them being healthier and way fitter is just simply always focusing on sleep because that's such a big move. But maybe you're not. Maybe you're somebody who always gets pretty good sleep, and so you just hitting your protein intake every single day is like yep. unlocks. Like so, it's like when you when you habit stack and you and you build these like small consistencies over time, you learn that about yourself, and and then that compounds of like oh now I, and which is I'm always trying to explain this even to Katrina. We've been together for so long, and she's always like, how does it? And I'm like, honey, for so long. I know, you know, this is lever one, then mm -hmm. that's lever two. And, and everybody's going to ask, what is that? It doesn't matter. That's mine. You know what I'm saying? That I, and I oh. figured that out over years of consistently playing with all these variables. And then once you figure that out, you like, man, you can really 
make it, it change. It actually fast. gets. It, I know. Isn't that funny? It's like as yeah. you get older, it gets easier. It does. Uh, harder. It does. It gets a lot easier. And, and that's, that's true I, with the, even the older members that you would have in the gym. You would see them. You talk to them. And but don't were, you think there's a misconception around that? Hundred percent. Because we say all. Because all the research. It's harder. To, you muscle falls off one pound a year, and it's harder as you age. If you don't and, exercise. Did you know that? Uh, <laughs> you guys remember this? I don't think people say this anymore. But I remember back in the day. Someone will be like, oh, you're going to build a bunch of muscle, and then what? You're going to get old, it's going to turn to fat. Remember that? You never heard that before? <laughs> yes, I do remember you hear that? that. I do remember that. Yeah. That's, that, I like, do. Maybe way long ago. No, well, I remember people, my, you know, it's funny. One of people, the people would say your muscles You know, one of the people that used hilarious. to say crazy shit to me, ironically, is my uncle who works for us. Oh, God. Okay. That used to, like, ask me when I was a, a trainer in my 20s, like, what are you going to do when you get in your 40s? Yeah. You, 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 see, you, you really think you're going to be you're training be people in a gym still? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. You're going to be training people, lifting weights like that. Like, you're young right now. Wait till you get my age. Yeah, you know, he's the same shit. Like, you should text him right now. <laughs> I'm picturing myself. I, ironically, hey, you, yeah. said, ironically, you work for me now, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm in my mid-40s now, right? listen to the show. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't listen to the show. <laughs> people of your age bracket and all that need the most help and are my best clientele. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, uh, for me, it was the best decision I ever made yeah. in my life by going in this 100%. profession. Forget, oh. the, forget the, where we're at now and all of course right but i mean just I, that was one of the i don't know about you guys did you guys were like were you guys like this part of what like drove me to do this was it, i knew it would be this massive accountability piece oh did you really yeah i knew that mm -hmm. i knew that if i if i chose this as a career like i gotta be consistent doing this if oh. i'm gonna go out and sell it or be it and be about it and so i i liked that additional pressure it mm -hmm. kind of remind me of when um when i announced i was gonna get shredded and I put it on Instagram. Like yeah. I remember really my there. favorite yeah. part about social media was like the accountability piece was like, man, I'm talking, you know, back then it was only like maybe a couple thousand people at most. And I'm talking to these people. It's like, I gotta, I gotta do what I say. Like, I mean, you know? I got a little bit of that when we first started and I had to do that challenge you yeah. know, through anabolic and all that. That was definitely like a consideration every morning. It's like, well, fuck, I gotta put this yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, look, you know, sorry. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, and I was just, you know, playing into the drama of it a bit. But it, at the same time, I'm like, I got to put myself out there. Like, well, that, it's a know? testament to your integrity too, right? You're you're a man of your word, and you feel right. like my word is my bond. If I'm going to say I'm going to go do something, then I'm going to yeah. do it. You know, so yeah. hey, I you like know, that. Speaking of yeah. training, I actually have a question for you guys. Somebody had posted this question. I thought this was an interesting one. Do you guys have because genetics are interesting, right? You have body parts that develop faster than others, and you know, some seem to be more fast twitch and others more slow twitch, even though it's kind of a general genetic profile. Do you guys have a body part that just can handle so much volume? Like it's hard for you to overtrain my arms versus other body parts. My Is arms. it your arms? Yeah, for you sure. Just, you just beat the shit out of them. For sure. For uh, sure. I, for a lot, like I used to get really frustrated, you know, for, I went years, I couldn't get them sore. Of course that was back when I used, that's all I used to chase yeah, was being yeah, sore. Yeah. And I remember I was doing like every like crazy magazine workout wow. to just, and I would have to do the craziest things just yeah. to get them sore. For me, it's back and delts. I could, I could train my back and delts for five hours and it just won't, it'll be no problem for whatever yeah. reason, for whatever reason. Legs, I guess chest, very yeah. low volume. <laughs> <laughs> I can do like a million push-ups and you know no i don't problem. really get chest yeah never, never i'd say really shoulders on you too you can, shoulders you, too yeah. you, you, you do a lot of like a lot shoulder of yeah. work all together and, and of you, course that's why i do it all the time because <laughs> you can I love it fun. i mean we it's tend to do that strong that's what i mean yeah. we've always said you guys that have, now what about the opposite you have body parts that are more Fucking easily calves, trained? Bro. Is it calves. Calves? come on jesus <laughs> i went through like i can't tell you how much like you know so that's why i get when people like tease and make sure like bro i've trained calves more than you ever have kids don't talk some shit to me don't talk some shit to me if i know i lifted my calves way more than you lifted all i had was a tibia yeah now i got <laughs> yeah. now there's muscle that's right shut up i told jessica they, be, they might be 11s but they were sixes when i started i wore shorts the other day and i was like kind of feeling myself i'm like babe like my, my, are my calves small are they not she's like they're not small and then but in the context of the rest of your body they're a little bit i'm like oh come on honey why'd you have to say that second part oh god <laughs> you know katrina did something like that again to me i was what like happened? you remember i told you she's not she doesn't like the the lighter version of me and i was telling her like how happy i am then i'm like man i'm I'm holding right now at 210. She goes, you don't look 210. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? I don't look 210. <laughs> Your wife's like, brutal, she, I know she is. She's I'm brutal, like, too. I'm like, I'm like, I look good right now. What are you talking about? I feel good. I look good. Do you <laughs> yell like that, too? Yeah, I do. I do. I get all mad like that. I get all frustrated with her. I was just like, come on, man. I look good right now. And no, she's just like, she likes me thick, dude. She's, she's like, heavy. 
I don't know. Yeah, I think because I think that's like a trick. That's what I think. It is. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, I think it's. A, she I wants think, to be less. Yeah, 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 I think it's like yeah. a keep me less attractive trick. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> that's hilarious. Because yeah, I'm like I, I'm holding strong at two ten right yeah. now, and I I'm I'm lean. I'm definitely. Yeah, really that's a good body weight for you, huh? That's a good body weight for you. I think right. I do. I thought two two oh five was what I thought I would kind of what I wanted to kind of yeah. land on. Um, and maybe I will over the next couple of weeks slowly do because what I'm noticing mm -hmm. now is I. I had like a hard stop right around 211, 213, and then I just recently hit the new low at 210, but that's taken like You know what I was going to ask you now? Two that, weeks. Now that you were talking about this, your, your psoriasis, you showed me yesterday your yeah, psoriasis. It's the best. It's, it's the been. best it's ever, ever been. Ever been. Part of it is, do you think diet? You yeah. did some stem cell stuff yeah. using peptides. Have you thrown, because it's not completely gone, right? No, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Have you tried adding the red light therapy to it? No. Because now would be the time. So funny you said that because I want, I'm going to not only do that, I'm not only going to do my red light, better now too, I'm going to yeah. get back to tanning too because tanning yeah. helps a lot. Bro, now is the time because you've got everything <laughs> no, I working for no, I you. I wonder if you would be able to completely eradicate it. Literally right now, I'm, when we go home today, uh, I'm, I have, I'm training today. And when I go train, I was like already thinking at the, you know, at the gym, they have red light there too. So, and they have, they, and they have the uh, uh, tanning bed. So over at the Fitness 19. Oh, really? Yeah. So I had already in my head, before you even brought this up, I was like, today when I'm going to lift. When do you do the juve otherwise? Do you do it same thing post-workout? No, or no, no. Oh, I do okay. it right after shower. Just it makes the most sense. Well, you're already I'm, naked. Yeah, I'm already naked. It's, yeah. it's in my bedroom. And so yeah. I just turn it on there, kind of dry off. But I mean, of I mean, I mean, now's the time, dude, because you, you got all these things working for you with the psoriasis. It's the best. Of, how long has it been since it's been this good? Uh, two months. No, no, no. What I mean is, when was the last time it looked this good in your life? At, oh God, um, more than ten years ago. No. Oh yeah. No. Right when I was competing. Okay. When my diet was so okay. Dialed. So I, yeah, yeah. so like now's the time. Throw the red light therapy. Get under juve and let's let's yeah. see if we can make it yeah. disappear. You know, I've, I'm because I, I wonder if it's gone. If that makes it less likely to come back versus if it's still a little there. You know what I'm saying? I what I do notice, like, so I. I tanning i know makes a huge difference the the red light will be interesting right now because where it's at like i'll be able to measure because i've also that's improved to a point it doesn't seem to be getting much better because now it's kind of like if you're familiar with psoriasis and kind of like with the look of it obviously people that have it probably really understand this so it's so awesome is like it almost feels uh, as good as it, it's going to get because mm. you have, uh, especially someone like me who's used creams for a really long time, it like bleaches your skin. Oh. And so what you see is this kind of big pink spot still, but that's like, that's healed because oh, when it's bad, it's scabby. It's right, dry right, 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 and it's right. scabby. And that's almost completely gone away. I have a little, little bit of that here and there, and but the it's really just now the big pink spot but a lot of that is because you almost bleach your skin using those those steroid creams for so long they stopped working after a while hmm. right yes yeah everything they, Do you know I, there was somebody who was it uh somebody we know i can't remember who it was but they had constantly for years had to use steroid creams and they stopped they they you'd have to use more and more and more and they went through a period where they're like i'm just gonna stop using these try to reset my body it got bad so, bro so bad it took like months like two or three months like the full scabbing full like Dang. took two or three months for the skin to come back and then they were able to get Dude, that's the worst part about those things is because your body adapts adapts yes, adapts you get you get used yeah. to it and then then all of a sudden you stop it and it like gets worse and then what do you do you go oh my god i get and then you, you go right back more on top of it yeah then you, get, you go right back at it i wish i understood that wow. because i'm sure that Obviously, where I'm at today, understanding like what's what's happening with like taking care of my gut, I think, and really lowering like the digestive stress mm -hmm. with how many low calories and doing this the all natural way. Had I done that instead of the steroids and the creams early on, I I I feel like it would have been a lot better than what I am right now. I think I've exacerbated it for so many years yeah. att attempting to yeah. shoot it up and do creams and do all these like band aids while also eating like a gorilla and not. Mm -hmm. Trying to go the more natural mm -hmm. way, and I didn't know though. My, you know, what pisses me off is my dermatologist, and I asked nutrition questions and stuff, and they were just like, "Oh, yeah, no effect. That doesn't matter." I know. I'm yeah. like, "Oh, okay." Well, speaking of you know the gut and um, also like bacteria and stuff, like I, I was wondering. I was actually curious because in sourdough they have this uh, bacteria. It's called Lactobacillus, uh, Lactobacillus uh, ruderi. Yeah. Is similar to. One found a colon, one that actually is transmitted from uh, the mom up and actually shuttles it through the cells up to their 
nipple up to like when they breastfeed too to pass it on to the baby, which also has this like anti cancer effect of uh, so breast cancer. Sow of the breads, okay. Um, typically, this isn't true for all of them, but sourdough, especially sprouted uh, grain sourdough, is is the easiest to digest and probably has the most health benefits. It's fermented. It's fermented yeah, bread. It's a fermenting process. And it breaks down a lot of the gluten that people have issues with. Uh, where, you know, gluten for a lot of people has digestive or inflammatory aspects. I feel like um, it's obvious. Aspects. I feel it immediately. I, so I feel too. It's, I, I feel yeah, like, I'll, oh, know, I can, I'll know if it's like a legit sourdough or if it's just like yes, and there's know, marketed also, that way. Yes, yeah. there's also real sourdough and then sourdough yeah. that tastes like sourdough. I, I, I totally know the difference. Yes. Yeah. Courtney's got really into, and you guys have probably tasted some. I brought so some good. to work. but So good. I mean, <laughs> it's funny. I'm like, to the point where I know now, like my threshold too, I can only have so much, yeah. you know, like, uh, but it's, it's so much better in my stomach, man. It's like night and day yeah. in comparison. What's the worst bread for you? Is it just plain old white bread? Yeah. Oh yeah. White for bread. Sure. Even, no, actually even, I would say like, like the French bread whole or whole grain. Oh, oh, whole grain. Like, like destroys wheat? me. Yeah. Like wheat. Brown wheat. Wheat. Oh, is, Rex. Is, yeah. Yeah. That's same. actually a good point. I wonder that I haven't Lava. had that in a long time. Yeah. Rex. Yeah. I've, I've, I left bread a long time ago and if I do, it's sourdough. Yeah, mm. it's just like, like that's just to go to if I have it. I noticed that a long, <clears> a long time ago. If I have any sort of, uh, <clears throat> for some weird reason though, I can handle like tortillas and things like that. I can handle like flour tortillas, especially if it's like a homemade version of it. That doesn't seem to bother me. Are they flour? Oh, or really? Corn? Yeah, both. I can't. Do really? That. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Both, both seem to be fine. I don't seem to have any issues with that. And like, I love corn tortillas. The only problem is you can't yeah, buy great. ones that are made at the grocery store already because then they're gross. They're like like uh, plastic. If yeah. you make them fresh, oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so good. Do you guys do, so you guys make them homemade? Not me. I don't. Well, not I, you, but we, your family. Yeah, we have family that have done that. Do you guys do the, what is it called? Masa? I don't. Is that what it's called? Masa. Yeah. I don't, do, I don't do any of it. I just consume it. You've never, you've yeah. never made tortillas? No, no. I really? No. Remember, I'm like, I'm like fake Mexican. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Masa, is that the cassava <clears throat> kind of flour? No, that's the it's uh, corn, corn, corn meal. Corn it's like corn meal. Of it. Corn flour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, you, you see the, when I went to Mexico, cassava works for me. Cassava is a, is a tuber, right? Yes. It's a, it's a root. Okay. It's an, yeah, it's a root. Uh, it's a starchy root, and so you can make like tortillas and tortilla chips and stuff out of it. But I remember I went to Mexico a long time ago, long time ago, and we went to this small village, and there were these women that were like making it by hand and then throwing them like, <clears throat> on a fire. They cook them. It was so good, oh, dude. Yeah. Oh, they were so good. You know, I meant to Legit. tell you because you you harped on us for so long, <laughs> you know, and I was late to the party. Uh, but now I, I it's become a staple for me. I've almost, you know, although I still do whenever it's convenient or whatever, I'll still have way. But I consistently now have done the the bone broth, uh, that protein it's powder. The easiest to digest protein it is. powder it, ever. And I, I feel like I it's like water. I notice that more than ever right now. Well, you're I, super sensitive to yes. that right now. So that makes sense. Yes, well, and it's I'll, and I feel like I can really boost it. Like uh, yes, so I do three scoops, which I think ends up being like fifty something grams yeah. of protein. So I can have like a fifty gram shot of protein, which is I need stuff like that right now. It's hard for me to get uh, even close to my numbers. And it's light. It's not thick and all cream. It's like really, I can shake it up. No, so Paleo Valley has and chocolate and vanilla, which are both. I actually haven't even had the vanilla. Delicious. You, you said the chocolate and I just have stuck with it. They're that. so good. Is but the vanilla can, one all right? Vanilla is amazing. Oh. It tastes really good. See, collagen or, or bone broth or collagen doesn't have a lot of flavor. So it's really easy to make it taste, you know, really good. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can push it up to 70 grams in a shake. I could never do that. <laughs> I don't think I've tried that. With yet. something else. But I can make it like- It's a, like four scoops. It's like all powder. Oh, yeah. It's all sludge. <laughs> yeah. it's no, it's still, it's still thin. thin. Yeah. It's really? still thin. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little like a, like a granular or whatever. Yeah, a little right? bit. But yeah, but not oh, bad. Okay. No. I mean, I imagine four scoops might be a little bit more. I mean, that's literally, because I three scoops feels like it's quite oh, a bro, bit. bro, it's like this much water <laughs> and like that much. Yeah. It's like all powder. <laughs> yeah. Powder. You go to your- my kids love it too. My 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 toddler, he runs around. Papa, make a protein shake. I want some protein. So, oh, really? Yeah, I give him just a little bit. Uh, he, that's great. He sucks it down. But it's and also because of the amino acid profile, um, of course, this doesn't matter if your protein is super high. But if it's not, then it, it it there are higher concentrations of amino acids that benefit things like the skin, hair, nails, uh, and the gut. So for gut health, it's like the protein when you combine, it, especially with the the digestive. Uh, hey, methods. how many how many yeah. trainers we have coming tomorrow? Like I think 75 around or? 75 or 80. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's gonna be a good time. I know this will be a good time. I'm excited. Yeah. Are you more excited about being and hanging out with all the trainers or the big live event that we're doing in Vegas. Mm, That's a tough one. Different. 
It's different. Uh, appeals. Yeah. It's different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, trainers are on the front lines. Yeah. Uh, and I know what they go through, what they That's do. It's more like a rally. Like, yeah, yeah let's right. let's go change and lives. Yeah, what, yeah well, how is it like, yeah, what's the what's the feel and takeaway between those two types of groups? Like, is one of them more exhausted than the other? Is one's more fulfilling for you? Like, what do you get from each? each they're both they're fulfilling in yeah, different ways, I yeah. think. Like, like, trainers, it's like, I know what they're going through. I know what they do, what they deal with. I know their passion. I identify with them. So usually questions around training clients, building business. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we talk to just listeners. It's uh, a lot. It's like, then I become the trainer, like, you know, where, where they're like my client and I'm helping them out, you know, type of deal. Or they're just talking about how much they enjoy the show. Very different, both, both very different in terms of, cause I, I manage trainers and I had clients and I, you guys did the same thing. So how do you feel? Yeah, I, well, I feel like the listeners, the general audience, like I'm more humbled, I think, a lot of times with their stories, uh, you know, and their impacts, um, you know, and it's just because it feels a little more personal uh, versus like I'm trying to actually troubleshoot and help a lot with the coaches. And, and but I feel I feel personally like it. I don't know. It's like it's you, you feel like that's going to translate to helping even more people yeah. because it's then it, you're impacting somebody like who has the tools to go out and build, totally. you know, somebody's life for, for the better. So I don't know. Yeah, it's it's, it's a different two different avatars. But um, I think sometimes when I meet just somebody that listens to the show, they just rock me. You know, yeah. I'm just like, whoa, dude, I, I had no idea. Like we were we had that kind of impact. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Adam? Uh, very different. Um to Justin's point, the meeting the like fans of the show, uh, very humbling, a bit awkward for me. Still, I think I've gotten way more comfortable as we've done mm -hmm. this for so long now, mm -hmm. but still weird. Still, has, it's just different, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but in a good way, like because you said, like you said, very humbling and like, oh my god, to hear the stories. Trainers, like it, I feel like I'm in my element. That's like old hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it reminds me of how much I love to do that. Like I love that career. Totally. That was a very yeah. fun time in my life. Was managing trainers, and uh, I took a lot of pride in being good at it. And I forget that sometimes until we get in those moments, and then I'm like, oh shit, get that I'm, old feeling. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I do have the answer for you. Yeah, yeah. I, exactly. I go, oh man, yeah, no, I could really help this person uh, be better at their craft, and uh, and a lot of that stuff is buried because we've done so many other things and moved on. And so I don't think about it and they pull that back out of me. And I'm like, Oh yeah. Yeah. That lights, a lights, an old fire that I really like. So very, very different feeling. One is, uh, you know, rewarding and humbling and uh, awkward and unique and like makes me every time we leave, it's like, God, oh, this is crazy. This thing that we did that feeling. And then the other one is like, fuck yeah. Like, like rally the troops. Like, exactly. I, like yeah, I'm going to make, I'm going to make some badass trainers. Yeah. Like, Oh, like, yeah, totally different, yeah. uh, feelings, each cool, but different for yeah, me. So totally. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm uh, sorry. I gotta let you guys, did you hear about the news on <laughs> cannabis with the scheduling that just came out? Did you hear about this? No, they're going to the, I think they just announced, I'm gonna bring up the article. I think they just announced that they're going to the reschedule grocery, store, gro grocery stores now. Same this way is federally. Yeah. Reschedule? No, the DEA to reclassify marijuana. So they're probably going to move it from schedule one, which is, you know, like heroin, LSD, stuff like that to schedule three. Wow. This will be the first time the U S government would acknowledge its potential medical benefits and begin studying them in earnest. So this will open up federal studies and federal stuff like that. So they're probably going to, going to reschedule it reclassify it why does this time feel ever. like what's your, what took you so long yeah. what's your prediction like where like schedule it as what and then, i think it'll be schedule three and then what is the what's reading between the lines here i think it'll be schedule three i think of which is give me what else is in schedule three i don't know my um, drug class schedule right. three maybe doug you could look up schedule three uh these is that are like tobacco no um, that's a good question no i don't think i think that means that there's medicinal benefit there's not a high, super high level uh, potential for abuse, if I'm not mistaken. Although the scheduling, for people who don't know, this is the truth. When they came up with scheduling of drugs, a, there wasn't a lot of logic thrown in there. It was really merely used as a way the to- hippies, right? It was a, it was a way, it was a political drugs tool. Drugs with a moderate to low potential for physical and psychological uh, examples of schedule two drugs or products containing less than 90 milligrams of codeine per dosage and Tylenol. Oh, testosterone. Testosterone schedule three. Uh, okay. Also. And Tylenol. Yeah, right. no, Tylenol with codeine. Ketamine. Oh, with codeine, ketamine. Yeah. Okay, got yeah. it. Ketamine's up there. No, this is good. This is good. They'll loosen it up. Is it going to become uh, a like a <coughs> regulated, um, you know, substance like it is in a lot of like what I mean by that is uh, uh, like 
available to people 21 and old, older, like you have here in California. Mm-hmm. Will that happen federally? If it does, you're going to explode them. I mean, that market will blow up so fast. I, sure. I, that's what I think this, that's why I was asking you to read between the lines and what is this? I think it's setting the table for, you know, the, uh, Philip Morris and stuff like the, here it comes. They've been, I mean, they've had fields and right. they've been ready to go for a long time. Yep. And we've got, and I, and I've always said this when we were in the space that all of this, you know, political posturing back and forth, really what it's all about is so the government can get a really good idea and estimation on what they should get from it tax wise. And now we've had a decade of tracking these clubs and ideas to know like, okay, well, we should, we should be getting at least this much per it's, state it's per whatever. It's interesting because my positions have changed a little bit uh, based off of what some of the experiments other states have done, uh, like uh, Oregon decriminalized, I think it was all drugs mm-hmm. for personal use. They're going to reverse that. They're going to reverse that because the people there are like, this is not working. There's a lot of drug use happening. There's a lot of bad. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like, Maybe you can look that up, Doug. I didn't know any People about that. were like <laughs> migrating there. Uh, just to do just drugs. for the drugs. Yeah. Uh, really? It's, from it's, my understanding. It's a, I, from a moral standpoint, my position is the same, which is if you're going to hurt nobody but yourself, then you know, throwing you in, in a cage because this flies right in the face of your libertarian views. Well, uh, I'm, I was never an uh, anarcho capitalist. I was never that far, but it I still, still think this would still fall libertarian, though. Uh, yes, but liber- the, uh, try classifying libertarians uh, like together. It's like trying to put <laughs> you can't cats. put a box around us. Yeah, yeah. it's not. It's uh, uh, yeah. So they're going to reverse course. That's what I thought. Um, yeah, I, I I I think we should definitely re-examine all drugs. I think we've done we've gone too far, but look at them and. Maybe I, figure out a better because here's what's going to happen. I like to see why. Um, I mean, aside from what you're just saying, Crime. Like, yeah, rampant I mean, like, public drug use, and can we see something? Can we see reasons why? I'd like to see uh, what they're what they're measuring. Because yeah. here's the thing: Does too, that Sal, with, like I don't, like, I, I mean, I, problem, I don't though? take like articles like this at face value anymore. It's like what's the what's the agenda mm. behind this? Like why decriminalize it? Why criminalize it? Why? Well, I mean, Oregon is is a super. It's a very hyper liberal state when it comes to stuff like this. So the fact that they're reversing course is kind of interesting. That's why I'm asking. That's you why know. I think there's got to be more. Going yeah, on see here. what the reasoning what is. Though, maybe let us know because uh, I'm looking for it. From what I read, it's like the crime and it's the it's the drug use. Oh, you know what? We also had this huge explosion recently uh, with fentanyl. Yep. And 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 because everybody is like free for all there, I bet there's getting like a high level of fentanyl deaths and stuff like that. Yeah. Thirteen time increase in overdose. There you go. Yeah. There deaths. you go. Yeah. And now here's the deal: if we overdose deaths, here's yeah. the deal: if we legalize, if we decriminalize and legalize marijuana, we now know this through the states that have done so. Use will go up. So I, I used to think it, not necessarily, but. It'll probably go up. You'll probably see. Yeah, but you know what's not fair about that, Sal? And here, and this is why this is not a realistic social experiment here. Uh, yes, it will. Um, and if, and I believe though, it would need to hit this before it come back down. Like we, as, that's just how we are as humans. Like we need to go out and see people r- fall off the so cliff. It's still novel enough. Yes, it's only three years. Yeah. Three years, and and that's only. I, I mean, you weren't aware. I wasn't aware of what's going on exactly over there or deaths. Like you're barely becoming aware of it. and They're already yeah, reversing. But, okay. It's like you would need that to be like a conversation around everybody. Yeah, this. but I also think you need to look at drugs mm. differently. I don't think fentanyl and marijuana, right, are in the same category. I think you're gonna, you're, you're you're talking about two completely different potentials for abuse and destruction. But my my point with the marijuana is, if it gets legalized, you will see, generally speaking more use across the board. Now, that's not necessarily a good thing. However, you you have to balance things out. This is a very nuanced conversation. Is legalization going to, uh, is it better from an incarceration standpoint? Is it better from a black, black market standpoint? Is it, uh, so is, what, you how, know, can we, now that we can regulate it, is it, is it going to be harder how, for young people to get it? Like how does, how does, how does Europe compare to us from a usage and abuse of alcohol? Because they have different alcohol laws than we do. Oh. Right. So they have the lower, they have the lower age. And so do they have a higher usage, but a lower, abuse, you know, what's tough about they, that, bro? Though, why? You know, what's tough per about capita? that is we do more of everything in America. Everything we do more of, <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. true, and it's because of Just our look at our portions of uh, eating. Yeah, you know, like, I don't, and I don't think it's a law thing. I think it's a culture thing. Because don't you think this would happen? Okay, so the uh, this is a, my prediction with something like marijuana is like if you if it were to go full legal and ever and then we, the use cases would go up the because of the novelty of oh we can do this now everybody's trying it doing it and then I feel like the 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 novelty the newness wears off and enough stories of like hey you're gonna become a loser if you do that every day son you're you know that right like you don't want to be in 
I think enough of those stories come out and then all of a sudden you see it come back down. So obviously huge spike originally or, or mm -hmm. the, when, when it happens, but then I would think it would peak and then I think it would come down. Do you I not think that? I don't know. I think it'll be ebbs and flows because of culture. Marijuana has been for a long time. Um, so I don't know. That's a, that's an interesting question. I don't know what that would look like, but I think generally speaking, I don't think it'll, I don't, th I think it'll go up even if it goes down It will go down lower than when it was strictly regulated just because it's more, um, it's more accepted. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. I mean, I think you can make the argument it's a bad thing, but like alcohol, for example, that's a culture thing. I don't think that's a law thing. Like what is the culture around alcohol in America? If I were to ask you guys, what is the alcohol culture in America? It's bars, party, bar and get fucked up. Yeah. And college, right. Yeah. Go get smashed. There's an old alcohol culture in Europe right. that drink with dinner, pre, family, yes. like you know, vineyards, celebration, wine, you know, it's way uh, less intense. Yes. And I really think it's the intensity around yes. a lot of these things uh, mm. that, that gets people to kind of tip towards. What do you think, Doug? According to this, binge drinking is actually higher in Europe than the so U.S. Well, if you say, yeah, but if you take out like the U.K., does that still happen? Because I know they have a lot. So that's interesting. Look, the colder countries, dude, I mean, it's. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. It's I don't ramp it. I don't know. Plus this, uh, we do everything more here. It seems like if there's like a drug problem here, we're going to have it like twice as bad. If there's like overeating here, it's going to be twice as bad. Yeah, I, mean, I wondered about that too, because even, I've met like one of our uh, relatives, like from Denmark, uh, and this kid was like 12, right. And came out and was like, sort of talking to me, my brother. And, um, you know, cause had access to alcohol. It wasn't a big deal, but like it, he went like in crazy excess with it. And, like, but, yeah. And so it's like, I, yeah, I was always, I was always wondering about that thought. Cause that was like something that people would say all the time is like, you know, you grow up with it. So you're, you're less, you know, too, like, look okay, up do, alcoholism. Do, 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 you, do you guys safe. really, do you guys really think too, that like, Binge drinking, uh, overdoses, all this uh, is is caused by the legal or unlegal ver reason. I like, think it plays a role, but like, that's not the root. Like, I mean, yeah. uh, and just play this game with me here. Uh, like what if we had a law that, or a rule that uh, before you have a child, you have to pass this test. Like imagine like you had like, like you, like a, an education or a, a course that all parents had to go. I think improving parenting skills with children would they have a greater impact on drug abuse and usage than making a drug legal or unlegal. That's what I think. Mm. Think about that. I think the problem with that. Do you agree with that or no? Well, I think I, I. I mean, who's making the test? Who's determining? Oh, stop! Don't go that way. Well, I'm that's not, what you that's, have to. That, do. That's not the exercise. The exercise is like it's a perfect the, test. No, no, it's not even that. It's not even that. The exercise here is that is is making better parents in our society. Would that make a greater impact totally. on drug abuse totally. and alcohol? I think just saying that. Yes, yeah, it's in the home. Yeah. So yeah. That's what I, I mean. That's that was when the answer was like, of yeah, course, yeah, like, you know, I don't want to empower the, the fucking government on yeah. who can have kids and not have yeah. kids. Like, the point You're is right. like, yeah. if we put together a, a course that just in our society became, yeah, became yeah. a neutral, or, or maybe it becomes in high school. Like you now in yeah. high school, you have to take this course on how to be a better parent yeah. well before you become a parent. The government will never be a better parent than the parent. Right. Oh. And so that I think things totally. like that, that's why I think we look at how to improve our society in such weird, obtuse ways. Like this does not make sense to me. Like that does not, mm. the guy who's going to go get high or overdose on a drug isn't going like, oh, this is illegal or this is legal. That's why I'm doing it. It's like, you're going to yeah. do it no matter what. Yeah. The thing, the thing that might have saved his life was maybe he had two parents in the home that stayed together and parented him better, yeah. or wh whatever. Yeah, I don't know if if. And by the way, there's exceptions to the rule. Yeah, no, so, I was just gonna say, as people, you know, yeah, of course, I, I, that, I, yeah, of course. I get that there's abusive, you know, parents or whatever. Right. But but yeah, for for good, a parent that cares, you yeah, know, like yeah. that, that's. I mean, if we're trying to move the needle as far in the positive direction of society, it's about culture. It's right. about your shifting village, culture. Your people, yes. yes. It's not about making more laws in, uh, or loosening up laws. No, the opinion. more laws you make, the more that get. That's the right. Laws it's that shifting. Break, our, it's shifting our culture yeah. and the way we respect these things like drugs, not by fear mongering people, not by outlawing them. Uh, and then and the things that we, I think, there, that make the greatest difference in, in society is the way we're raised in our homes by our, our parents, and or if they even people, stay together, like that stuff matters. People more. abuse yep. substances because they're numbing, distracting, or looking for something that they can't get from the substance, and so it becomes abuse. Yeah. This is why people abuse those things. But like alcohol, for example, would we have less alcoholics if alcohol was illegal? I don't know. I think the argument might be probably not, maybe not. I don't know. But would there be less people drinking overall? Probably. Sure. So so it's like one of those things. But then again, it's like we know what happened with alcohol prohibition and what that caused. It, 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 unfortunately, 
sometimes market demands are so high that the best thing you can do is try to manage it. You can't block it, even though it's bad. It's like the market demand is so big for this yeah. that if we block it, people are going to kill each other to get this anyway. So the best we could do is try to kind of like manage it, yeah. you know, type of deal. But yeah, definitely. I think they should revisit um, the scheduling of, uh, of substances and, and <laughs> don't, how we treat don't them. do drugs, kids. Don't, <laughs> don't do drugs. Yeah. So the shout out, we talked about it earlier. We're going to be in Vegas for a live event. We're going to be talking and meeting fans and listeners in Las Vegas. You can get tickets at mindpumplive.com. This is happening June 15th at the Bellagio. Go sign up. Check it out. There's a company called Brain FM that makes music that literally changes the state of your brain. This is real stuff. If you want to put your brain into brainwave patterns that induce focus or meditation or sleep, this company actually does it. Nobody around can do what they do. This is all patent pending stuff. Go check them out. Go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump. Get 30 days for free. Try it out. Try the focus. Listen to it. If you don't feel like you are extremely focused after five minutes of playing this in your ears, just cancel it. But you won't because it actually works. Again, it's brain.fm forward slash mind pump. All right, back to the show. First question is from Haley Valin. Whenever I travel, I end up losing weight because I'm so scared of perfectly tracking food that I end up restricting how do you balance staying active and choosing healthy meals while away with not being overly restrictive? You you have to reclassify in your mind the value of the vacation in the first place. What is the value of this vacation? Usually it's take a break, de-stress, enjoy the people I'm around, view the sights, absorb the culture uh, or or taste the culture or experience the culture that I'm in. Those are the values of vacation. And vacations are very good for your health. These experiences are very good for your health. The data is quite clear on this. What the value of a vacation is not is workouts, eating strict, making sure I stay active, keep my body fat percentage down. So you have to, this is just like when people ask us about um, fasting for Ramadan, right? Like, how do I keep my protein or whatever? It's like, you're, you're this religious practice, the value of it is not your fitness. The value is, is spiritual health. Vacation, the value of it is so you can go over there enjoy yourself, relax, be with the people around you. It is not for you to, to take all the stress with you. That you just, have, you just ruined your vacation. Haley, I have one rule. I, one rule that I live by in this is just don't eat like an asshole. That's it. Like I literally enjoy the food, enjoy the drinks, enjoy the scenery. Uh, who cares if I hit protein intake, not a protein intake, who cares if I get a lift in or not? None of that matters. It's literally just be mindful that you could also just get out of control and be binge drinking. That's not at that point. You're not, enjoying the culture. Mm -hmm. You're not enjoying the, the people that are with like, you're just overdoing it. And so, but I mean, yes, have a great meal and and choose something off the dessert menu and enjoy it and have a nice glass By of the wine way, with that steak. And, like, and yes. I'm going to add to that because if you find yourself doing that, but then going overboard, right? Oh my well, God, I drank so much. I ate so much. My stomach hurt. And that happened because of how you treat yourself before you go on vacation. That's if right. you restrict so hard right. that this is not relaxing, this is escaping. Well, now you're in, you're in the opposite. It's the escape yeah. and it's like fully going into the impulses, right? Yes. And that's not healthy. Uh, it, it's, and that's not really vacation anyway. That's that's <clears throat> that's a totally different thing. Totally. Yeah, and, so. and by the way, you could literally, okay, uh, every meal – uh, you know, that you have on vacation, uh, enjoy a, a, either a glass of wine or a dessert in there. And you can't, you're not possibly going to put on 10, 15 pounds no. of body fat in a week. You're just not. No, in just, fact, her problem is the opposite. She loses weight because right. she restricts. Right. Like, like which is a, a, what she's doing is she's cowering from going the opposite way, right? Yes. Instead of enjoying the glass of wine and the dessert yep. so that she's like, I'm going to have nothing because I'm going to be fearful of the weight I'm going to put. Listen, just having a glass of wine or having a dessert, a dinner here and there, like is not going to put on so much body fat that it's going to be so tough. And, like, And I want to communicate this. If, if you do this and you go on vacation, you kind of let go a little bit and you just go to be present, enjoy yourself, enjoy the people around, you are going to experience a completely different vacation. You're going to be like, wow. Yeah. I wish I come did back this refreshed instead of, you know, still like anticipating totally. like, ah, the stress. Next question is from Abby Buffkin. What are the most useful cert cert certifications for a new aspiring personal trainer going into the industry? 
What should I start with to get my foot in the door? Mind pump coaching. Yeah. So typically, if you're going to work- <laughs> Step one. Yeah. 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 For, so typically, you know, if you, especially if you're going to work in a big box gym, if you're a new trainer, which is probably where you want to start, you're going to need a nationally, you know, a national certification. NESM is the best yeah. in the business. Foundational. It's, it's the best in the business. They've been around for a long time. They're really, really good. And what they do, their information is constantly updated. Very broad, too. Very broad. They're the best in the industry. Now, beyond that, after you get your national certification, which, again, you're going to be required to get that if you work in a big box gym, um, and you want to just further your ability to build your business and be successful, uh, our certification course was designed specifically for that. We specifically, in our course, are teaching coaches and trainers how to be more effective, how to build their business. So we have that one. And then NCI has got great certifications for online coaches as well. I think if you had those three, you would be so set up. You'd yeah. be set up very, very well. Yes, I, I agree. I have nothing to add to that. Those are the three yeah. that I would probably, if I was going to do them, I'd do them in that exact order. And only for the reason that you said, I'll probably do ours first if you were considering doing private or by yourself and you don't need a national cert. But if you're going to a big box gym, which we tend to recommend to most people, then you have to go the national cert first. I think NASM's, uh, you know, their their intro course is one of the yeah. best broad courses as far as general information for the most of the clients you're going to have, and then ours for specifically being successful at what you're doing, and then NCI nutritionally because I think they do such a good do job of going very deep on nutrition, but very uh, applicable to your clients yeah. and, and easy to digest, which. I, there's other nutrition courses out there that I think are also good, but I think NCI does the best job. Just like I like to think that what we did was the best job at like helping you scale your business. So I think those three are excellent. Yeah, yeah that covers it for, I think, you know, the, because it's a new aspiring personal trainer. Right. The only thing I would have added to that if it was somebody that's been doing it a while is to just keep getting educated, yep. you know, with your FRCs and these other sort of specialized um, educational certifications that will help you to like problem solve a bit more effectively. Yeah, totally. Um, and the NASM Correctional Exercise Specialist cert, I have to say, oh, yeah, was one of the most valuable. That's the ones next ever level. Got. I mean, it made me so, in terms of just, how to to train people and apply. We talk about that in our course though, don't we? Yes, we yeah, do. Yeah, we talk yeah, we talked how valuable that was. So yeah, I agree. Next question is from Not Not A. If steps are controlled, does it matter if you get them from long distance running or walking and would it affect your muscle building? Well, yeah, it matters. Yeah, big difference. There's a big difference. Like long distance running, I mean, you're pushing stamina and endurance far and you're stressing your body far more than, energy differently than with walking. Yeah. So if you want endurance and stamina, then, then you would train with the running. If you just want the activity and you want to preserve muscle from your strength training, walking, walking is exceptional for that. It's not stressful in the body. Like running is, it doesn't, it's not like the super hard activity. It doesn't push endurance like running does for the same period of time. So it doesn't send a potential, you know, potentially conflicting, signal to the body than your strength training. I would say if your goal is to maintain, to, to build good muscle strength, be lean, just have good longevity, fitness, and health. Um, walking is a great complement to how, strength. Training. How do you guys simplify and communicate this? Right. Cause you have what you have a cardio threshold, right? So everybody has an individual cardio threshold. And I, Justin, I heard Justin tell or say real quick that like you're using different, you're doing, using a different energy source. When you're just walking, your your body is just it's it's not being pushed, and so it doesn't have a huge demand. You start running, and then you get your heart rate up to a certain level. And everybody's is a little bit different, and you can mathematically figure out where your cardio threshold. Once you tip over to that cardio cardio threshold, you're now your body is is utilizing energy different, and that's where you get at risk of your body starting to pare down muscle because it doesn't have enough fuel and access right away from glycogen that it's looking for other sources and it's trying to become as efficient as possible. So is there a, a, a better way to communicate that than like, I've always like, uh, it's never been like a good, a, a good, know, it's, it's, yeah, it's a complicated. I always like to think but, of just adaptations. Like if your yeah. body wants to get really good at long distance running, what it's going to do is get good with, and with energy efficiency, it's going to lighten your body, which includes muscle loss. Cause it's going to make, you don't need big muscles to have a lot of endurance. In fact, you can have a tremendous amount of endurance with a little bit of muscle. So what your body does is it's always trying to get better at what you're asking it to do. So it's going to yeah. turn you into this calorie efficient, like small engine type because of Because you're of signaling person. it to that degree. Right. right? Now, like, walking a lot uh, is far, is far, far less of a signal in that direction. Yeah. Walking a lot doesn't, doesn't tell your body, unless you're walking a lot, a lot. Like you'd have to walk crazy amounts, but 
Otherwise, it's just activity. Even it, walking, because it a lot of has to do with the, where the heart rate tips over. Once you hit that cardio is, threshold, yes. once you exactly. hit that cardio threshold right. and the heart's beating like that, it sends a louder signal to the body like, oh, we're not just walking. We're right. like- This is a big stress. Yeah, this is a big stress we're pushing. In fact- to usher more of our energy you know, over in this direction. No, said. good point. Because in fact, for a lot of people, walking is not only not a stress, it's actually a rejuvenating type yes. of movement, a healing type yes. of movement. Whereas running- in very rare cases, is like that. You don't have to be a, such an extreme athlete to like rejuvenate from you know long distance running. Average person, that's a big stress. Next question is from Jasper Morrow three one six five. Any benefit to pre exhausting large muscles before compound lifts? That way, you can use a lighter weight and still reach close to failure with less risk. Yeah, there this are is, benefits, but not for what the. What I know asking. this is a mistake that people think that getting yeah. to failure is. This is the again with the when we communicate about failure training, right? You have all these trainers that that are on the, especially the bodybuilding community that are like so into the failure study. So like take that muscle to complete exhaustion and failure and that sends a loudest signal to build more muscle. And so people start coming up with ideas like this, like, oh, if it's just taking the muscle to failure, like, well, I could pre-exhaust it and I could do this thing first and then that will yeah. go to failure. No, so the benefits for pre-exhausting uh, large muscles, but so a, a compound lift is one that uses like two joints, right? Isolation, one joint, so barbell squat, compound lift for, and let's say quads, but works more than the quads, obviously. Uh, leg extension would be an isolation lift. So the question is, what if I did leg extensions first and then went to squats? And now I use lighter weight on the squats because my quads are already tired. Doesn't that make it safer? And is the effectiveness the same? The value in pre-exhausting is if you have trouble connecting to yes. a muscle and a compound it's lift. It's neuromuscular connection. Yeah, so if I'm doing a squats and I, I can't, I'm, I'm on glute squatting and I'm not getting very much quad, which is never the case, but let's just say that is. Pre-exhausting <laughs> may help me identify how to change my form so I could feel it more in my quad. You should have used the other one because it's yeah, never Yeah, glutes that. is probably. I think, yeah. I think I've had like one or five Never, clients. it's always yeah. butt, right? It's the other one. So that would be the benefit. Now, if that's not an issue for you, then pre-exhausting with an isolation will actually reduce the overall muscle building effect. Uh, just because you go, now you fail going lighter doesn't mean it's as effective because you can do the same thing with not resting between sets. Uh, the, the sets that you're strongest in are the most effective sets in your workout. So let me say that again or, or differently. When you look at your workout and you look at all the exercises from beginning to end, your freshest and strongest in the beginning, those are the exercises you're going to get the largest adaptation. The ones at the bottom are the ones you're going to get the, the, the least adaptation. And that's a huge difference, but it's a difference. That's why when you want to develop a body part that's lagging, you move it to the top of the list and you find you get better results. So a bench press with good technique, activating the chest, doing great. You'll build more muscle with the bench press than you will with the fly, unless you don't feel it in your chest when you bench press. You feel it all on your shoulders. So then you do flies first, and then because you already feel the chest, it's already got some blood in it and it's a little fatigue, you can adjust your technique and boom, you can make the compound lift hit the chest a little more. Look, if you like our show, we have a squat like a pro guide. This is free, by the way. Teaches you how to squat like a pro. Mobility, strength, workouts. It's in the guide. It's free. You can find it at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. You can find me at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 